All right, good morning, guys. It's October 17th, 2023. It is a day after the Mount Wilson ride on the 2023 EUC tour. Uh, I figured I'd make a video going over my modified Pagode Master. Uh, kind of cover my thoughts and opinions on this wheel uh, post 2,150-ish miles that I now have on the wheel. Uh, Overview of modifications, um, things I might do differently uh, next time. Reasoning behind some of the changes that I made, as well as some generalized lessons learned. Um, this is not going to be very structured in terms of what the video is going to cover. I'm just going to kind of go over things as I kind of think of them. Um, right, uh, so... I guess we'll talk about the master itself. Electronically, it's been pretty much fine. Uh, I did have a couple issues with the soft buttons up here. Um, I had to replace the switch on this uh, power button. My spin kill is totally dead. Uh, there's probably either dirt or dust inside of the switch or the switch is broken. I don't particularly care to fix it though because I've never actually really use that spin kill button. Things that are broken on this wheel. Uh, I broke the trolley handle. I have broken almost uh, every one of the battery tabs that I guess I can't really show them very well, but the battery mounts like these, that's one of probably two that still stock. The rest are all 3D printed and been replaced. Um, yeah, durability wise, this wheel's uh freaking train wreck it gets annihilated the moment you drop it um not very great in that in that aspect uh tire tire is pretty crap the one that it comes with uh changed that to a i had a 244 for a long time 1500 miles now i'm on a 241 which is at 650 miles and it's starting to wear quite quickly so I do really like this 241, but um, yeah, it's not nearly as durable as the uh, 244, but the performance on dirt is a lot nicer. Um, other than that, no real complaints about the wheels. Electronically been very reliable, uh, no cutouts, no charging issues. Again, this is a version one master, so it's got the series packs, never had an issue with them. Uh, not very... Supposedly not super reliable, but it's been okay for me, so Yeah, uh, let's cover some of the modifications that I've done um, I obviously have my own fairing system here. This is the front part of the Titan armor fairing from I'm forgetting who uh, But it's on Thingiverse. This is a polycarbonate side panel. Uh, I put a hole here actually so I can access that grub screw but those grub screws, uh, after all the miles of dirts and drops, jumps, and stuff like that, the threads are just so worn out that you do a couple good drops or a couple good jumps, and they back out already. That's even with super glue or Loctite inside of them. Uh, lower pads here, uh, those are, again, DIY 3D printed. Uh, this is just a modified one that I designed and made myself. Uh, these are a little bit different from... Uh, I know that there's another one out there, I think, from EMA, uh, but my wheel's a little bit different, so I ended up having to build my own. Uh, <clears throat> other things, oh yeah, I bent my mud go my kickstand a long time ago, so it's like super crooked. Look at how that sits. Pretty stupid, but other than that, yeah, not too much there to talk about. I guess the other main thing, uh, I guess this is getting into some of the modifications that I did. Uh, my wheel is a, so my master is now a hundred millimeter travel suspension or hundred millimeter. Yeah. The travel of this, uh, slider can go through is hundred millimeters. Uh, I did that by swapping out the, e uh, original masters drive tubes to EX30, um, slider bars. And I also. Uh, you can see the metal that's underneath there. Uh, that's an aluminum, basically just sheet aluminum that I cut into my battery mounts. Uh, this is a Master Pro pedal hanger with the adjustable pedals. 
Uh, right now I have it in the highest position and um, I'll get into the performance aspect of this later. I won't quite cover it right now, but there's pros and cons to having it like this. Um, suspension wise, this is my DIY linkage. I designed it myself. It is a 100 millimeter suspension travel to a 50 millimeter shock travel. It's two to one ratio. Uh, I'm running a Sprindex. Uh, that's a basically load adjustable spring that lets you go from, it is upside down, so you'll have to forgive me. It's the only way this one fits, but it goes from 650 all the way up to 760. There is a 760 position uh, at 750 right there. Um, you can just change that by um, taking this uh, plastic lock and it you can pull it to and from and that's what changes the it locks out basically a certain amount of the spring and prevents it from compressing and that changes the spring rate of the spring uh the spring itself is mounted to a cane creek db coil il uh, it's a four position shock adjustment with low and high speed compression and low and high speed rebound adjustments uh, like any coil shock you have your preload adjustment not here um, yeah, it's been a pretty good shock, but yeah, I think the design of my linkage here, it's, although this is like my fifth design of it and I am pretty happy with it right now, there are still improvements that can be made. Uh, I think the main thing with my design so far is that I've pushed this pivot point out very far. So the actual shocking, the shock or the, uh, what would you call that? The mount for the arm is all the way up here where this uh, screw is for your suspension arm. And the pivot point is all the way down here. So it's quite a long pivot arm. It's about that long from my uh, pinky to my thumb. You can see the pivot point right there. And what that is doing is that with such a long lever arm, it makes it very easy for the actual, when you're actuating the suspension, it makes it very easy for this uh, lever to kind of compress the shock. Now there's a pro and a con to that. The pro is that your suspension will be very nice and responsive. Uh, but the con to it is you'll blow through the travel very, very easily. And that makes you very reliant on all of these adjustments here. Now, I'm finding that while I have very good adjustment here, uh, I can like correctly set all of my compression settings and my rebound settings. I am still a little bit limited by this spring. I'm finding that despite being on a 750, with the amount of leverage that is exerted by this uh, suspension design, it's still v having an easy time compressing this. And I probably still need a heavier spring. I'm a light person. I'm about 140 pounds ungeared, so maybe 150 with gear. And it's just, there's a few occasions where, like if you do a long series of stairs, you notice that you can feel a lot more of the terrain. And that's because it's kind of blowing through the travel too easily. Um, now I have been able to kind of mitigate that by um, dialing a lot more compression dampening, but that's not a very ideal uh, solution. I think that the, there would be some benefit to kind of pushing this pivot arm back a little bit more so that, that there's a little bit less leverage exerted on the shock. Now that's really technical, but yeah, that's my opinion on at least this current shock design. I think it's very unlikely that I actually change it again because it's just it would be such a minor change for a significant amount of work, and I just don't think it's worth it. Uh, yeah, let's talk about these pedal height deal. Um, now, for the trails that I'm around here, uh, I'm mostly kind of just lazy-ass cruise it up um, some back roads, and then I like to ride down the Black Diamond single-track mountain bike trails. And what that means is that a lot of times the biggest benefit for me is having very high pedals. Um, now very high pedals gives you a couple of things. It's like a game of trade-offs, right? You gain a shitload of clearance, 
but you lose a lot of controllability. Um, basically, when you're mounted so high off the ground like this, this is actually, maybe with sag, you're just about in line with where the axle or the center point of the wheel is. Um, but basically what this does is it raises your center of gravity extremely, extremely high, and it makes the wheel very, very unstable. So if you're trying to like rip around a corner on loose terrain. What I found, especially yesterday on Mount Wilson, was that I now Mount Wilson's very gravelly and you have a lot of like loose rock everywhere. I was finding that I was sliding out on almost every turn and I, it was, I was having a hard time. Uh, and that's mostly because my pedals are so high, my center of gravity was really high. And every time I would lean the tire over, the wheel over, it would be putting a lot of uh, weight on these, uh, or it would put a lot of twisting force and it would be a lot, it just wasn't very stable. So it just wanted to slide out on me all the time around every single corner. And I get the impression that if I had just gone one position lower to this uh, middle position on the adjustable pedal bracket hangers, that would have lowered my center of gravity just enough to really allow me to just escape that situation a lot easier. Um, now again, uh, this is kind of set up for what I want to do in the local trails that are close to me. It's not like I'm going up Mount Wilson every day. Um, but yeah, that's the trade-off for having a very high pedal height. Um, pretty bad center of gravity, less stable, but a lot more clearance for big rocks and stuff like that. A lot less likely to uh, scrape on turns as well. Uh, that's another thing. But yeah. Uh, let's see, anything else that I wanted to cover? Oh, right. Uh, why would you, why should anybody even consider going up to a hundred millimeter uh, drive tubes? Uh, it's honestly a very, very subtle change. I don't think that most other people would want to spend the time or effort to do this sort of um, swap because number one, you need a custom linkage. Number two, you have to do all the bars and then, or you have to buy the new bars and all that. And then number three, you have to recut that um, lower battery brace. And that's just a whole lot of work for what is effectively a very, very minor impact on your ride. Now, the reason why I wanted to do it is that when I updated my linkage to this sort of scissor design, uh, your, all, your coil shocks, and generally all of your air shocks too, there's a certain amount of sag that they are pursuing. Uh, typically that number is between 20 to 30% of the shock travel. So if you're using 20 to 30% of the shock travel as sag, you're losing a lot of travel here. Um, with the stock master's uh, travel, which is 80 millimeters, um, with a linkage design like this, you're, you lost 20 to 30% travel, so that would be 20 millimeters, between 20, 25 to 20, 25, 30 millimeters of um, actual suspension travel. And at that point, um, basically you only had 50 millimeters of compression and that made the ride a lot harsher. Uh, it's just not enough travel to go through and you would blow through the travel very easily, you would be bottoming out. I mean, if you loaded up the suspension properly with enough pressure or a proper spring rate, it was just really harsh and I didn't want to deal with that. So I updated to, now that I have 100 millimeters uh, suspension travel, I can run 25 millimeters of sag, still have 75 millimeters of compression, and that is just about right for me. Um, now, in ext I did get to try Roger's Extreme uh, yesterday on Mount well, on the Mount Wilson ride, and you can definitely tell that the 130 millimeters of travel, I thought that I was gonna be excessive, but you really can tell that that extra amount of travel, it goes a long way in allowing you to, number one, have the right sag, but also number two, have enough space for a nice progressive um, compression so you aren't um, 
it doesn't feel like it's a very, very fast ramp and you just, it's like a very harsh suspension. Uh, anyways, that's a completely different wheel. Um, this was supposed to just be a overview of my wheel, some of the modifications I did and why I did them. Some of the drawbacks and some of the uh, pros and cons to it. Um, it's a very long video at this point, it's like 60, 15 going on 16 minutes. So I better wrap it up now. Uh, thanks for watching. If you got any questions, let me know. Thanks.